Well, that was a bit of fun, wasn't it? I've seen that movie 21 times in the theater since it came out, so I'm allowed. Anyway, that was 17 tracks of Tiny Voice, and full credit, of course, goes to Richard Strauss for his brilliant orchestration of that piece. Anyway, you're looking at the patch that was used on all 17 tracks, and we're going to go on a tour of Tiny Voice right now. Tiny Voice is configured as a traditional two-oscillator subtractive synthesizer. The two VCOs are up here in the blue section. Noise source is up here as well. The filter, which is a full implementation of the MRB syrup filter with all nine responses, is available right here in the brown with its envelope generator. And down here is the envelope generator for the VCA. Both envelope generators are the laboratory velocity envelope, so they're both velocity sensitive envelopes. And uh, the sustain pedal is available on the polyphonic version and is plugged in behind the scenes. So that's, that's always there. All right, thank you, good night. That's it. Actually, that really is it. It's pretty simple. The two VCOs have three tuning controls. You have the octave right here. And coarse tuning, which is quantized in semitones. Which makes tuning very easy. And of course the fine tune. Plus and minus two semitones. This is VCO2, identical controls. Some of the knobs, the label doesn't change, like the coarse tuning. As you turn it, it just says C on it and it stays a C. Here, the knob changes to show the setting. Anything that's a rotary switch, the label will change. And right here are the two waveform selectors. You have saw, super saw, square, 30% pulse, 15% pulse, 7%, shark tooth, which is a combination of triangle and sawtooth as found on the mini Moog. So it's kind of like a buzzy triangle. Triangle, sine, white noise, and pink noise. Now VCO2 has the identical waveform selections except for the noise. We'll get that to that in a second. Here's the balance control. What this does is it balances the mix between VCO1 and VCO2. So here I have an eight foot and a four foot saw. And as I turn the balance control, I can get whatever mix of the two I want. Let's say this is a sine wave. Let's say I want to add a strong third harmonic onto this eight foot sawtooth. So I go up an octave and a fifth. So here's an octave and then I go up a fifth. And you can hear that strong third harmonic being brought in at whatever level I like. Good for those reedy sounds. Okay, so let's dial in all VCO2, turning the balance all the way that way. And the two noise selections we have on VCO2 are violet and brown. Now violet noise is actually brighter than white noise. We can compare the two. Here's violet and white. Violet, white, and then brown is darker than pink, so let's compare that to pink. Here's pink and brown. Now the timpani patch in also Sprock Zarathustra, which you heard, uh, was done simply with a sine wave and some brown noise. And we'll get to that patch in a second. So let's get a preset going here. One saw bass. And that'll bring us to the filter section. Cutoff, cue, 
and response. So cutoff, Q or resonance, all the way up to self oscillation at the top. And you have all nine responses that the syrup filter has available here on a rotary switch. So one pole low pass, two pole, three pole, four pole low pass, and then two pole band pass, four pole band pass, one pole, two pole high pass, notch, and bypass. So if you want to use a different filter, if you don't want to use syrup, you want to use something else, you can bypass the filter section altogether by dialing it up here. So that's just the bare VCO. This has no effect. Here's the ADSR for the filter and the envelope atten attenuverter. Negative modulation and positive modulation. TRK, that's keyboard tracking. You can go from no tracking to 100% tracking to 200% tracking. And what that does is it moves the filter cutoff according to the note you're pressing. And this is an external cutoff input with an attenuverter for that. Then you also have a dynamic control. And that's for keyboard dynamics. If it's turned all the way down, you get the full effect of the envelope. If you turn it all the way up, you get full dynamics, which means if I play quietly, I get a little envelope. If I play loud, I get more. So that's it for the filter. And down here, you just have the AD ADSR for the VCA. Keyboard input, one volt to the octave, gate, velocity input, and output and an external FM input for the VCO section. You also have a mute button here. Let's go over these, we didn't go over these three buttons. This is a sub oscillator that's added to VCO1. Vibrato. And mute. A lot of you guys are going to be stacking multiple tiny voices because you've got the room to do it. And if you want to hear the influence of one or a few or whatever set, this makes it easy to mute. And it is a clickless mute, so no ticking when you, when you activate it or deactivate it. Okay, that's really it. The module is deceptively simple and very easy to use, and I'm sure everybody will be up and running with it in two minutes, five minutes tops. Anyway, uh, if you guys want to stick around, I'm going to go over some presets so you can get an idea of what a simple module can do. Let's get rid of the patch cords so you can read the names. We're in the bases set of presets. You get a lot of presets. <laughs> Thank you.
This one's called Wiggly Dirt because I've got the vibrato on and we also only have one pole of filtering so it's letting a lot of buzz through. Now listen to the difference as we dial in more poles. <laughs> Barefoot, we're just hearing the oscillator section. We have the filter in bypass. All right, that's it for basses. Let's go to polyphonic world. So same patch, it's just, just one tiny voice. This was the patch used on all of the tracks. There are no effects, of course, used here at all, so you can hear what the module sounds like. Getting into the variations that were used in the track. Here's the oboe. some leads. Now this patch has some helper modules to get a little more detail into the leads. I've got an envelope generator and amplifier to provide delay vibrato or whatever kind of FM I want. And a little secret, two glides, one set to linear, one set to constant time. And that adds realism to the gestures. Here 
here the envelope is causing the pitch going in here on the VCO FM to rise up to the tone I'm playing. Here, I'm using the envelope generator and amplifier to take a very fast LFO and just spit in a little bit of FM right at the beginning of the note. some leads. All right, here are the percussion presets. I won't talk, we'll just quickly go through them. You could read the names right here. So this is the timpani used in the track. Turn the balance control this way. Sine wave. Brown noise. Mixed evenly. Pretty convincing timpani. I was really surprised it came out as good as it did. All right, so there's some percussion. Here's a patch, one tiny voice in the left channel, one tiny voice in the right channel. Be very afraid. Stereo. I guess I'll leave the rest of those presets up to your self-discovery. And you can see just what two modules that take up almost no room can produce such a gigantic sound. And I hope that you have seen the versatility of this little module. Now, Tiny Voice was never intended to replace all the modules in your arsenal. 
It's really a utility bread and butter module. Uh, let's say you're working on a multi-part sequence. You need a baseline. You need some bleeps and bloops and a, and a simple pad, maybe a saw lead line or something like that. Let Tiny Voice do all of that. Let Tiny Voice do all the easy lifting while that 30 module Maserati of a patch you've been working on for a week takes center stage. Tiny Voice will do all those easy jobs without taking up your whole screen. You guys on laptops and smaller monitors are really going to enjoy Tiny Voice. Everybody else will too, I'm sure. I've certainly had a lot of fun with it so far. So until next time, get in that studio and make something. Okay, bye-bye.